Thank you, Professor Hurd. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm uh, very honored to be here to talk about my um, uh, work. Um, so, just in the morning, we talk about the uh, epidemic, uh, epidemiology of PBA sample in Taiwan. And the first epidemic being 1998. Later on, we actually have several epidemics uh, almost every three to five years. And there are um, certainly um, some fatal and severe cases. And we have uh, uh, did a lot of work on virus events, on stage-based ma uh, stage management, and um, all the uh, work may help to understand E71. And uh, in addition to that, uh, how about the current EV symptom status in Taiwan? Previously, we have done several uh, zero epidemiology in Taiwan, including before the 1998 epidemic and uh, after the 1998 epidemic. Um, also, um, Professor and the Chairman Lin uh, done uh, uh, EV7 zero epidemic in uh, 2007. And last year we uh, did it again. So um, we um, performed the um, epidemiology in all four regions, uh, including East, West, um, North, and the Southern Taiwan, and um, they received some questionnaire in investigation and the neutralization antibody. I think this is the most important study, um, uh, that this important slide in, uh, in my talk, okay? Um, uh, we have uh, several uh, different here. And the first one is 1997. This is before the 1998 epidemic. We can see that the uh, zero positive rate was lower uh, in preschool children. This uh, between um, four to uh, about 30 percent zero positive rate. And after the 1998 epidemic, uh, the Zero positive rate was um, higher uh, in preschool children than before the epidemic. But uh, the children or adult, uh, the school children or adult, the zero positive rate was, was uh, around uh, seventy percent. Okay, and uh, later on, uh, Professor Lin. Uh, did a similar study and uh, also in all over the Taiwan. And surprising that um, the uh, young children, the zero positive rate was not high. It, it is uh, uh, around 3% um, to 15%, um, uh, okay? And the school children and adolescent was relative uh, significantly lower than the year down in 1997 and 1999, okay? So um, the zero positive rate was significantly lower in the previous in, uh, uh, year. And last year, we did it again. Uh, the zero positive rate also, uh, if maybe even lower, um, yeah, than the previous year. Um, and how about the, the school? School children of adolescent uh, was even lower than the year 2007. But uh, adolescent, there is no significant difference. And even is also no significant difference because there are maybe some much more antibody. So uh, we find that um, in the uh, kindergarten, preschool children or school age children were, was very low during recent 10 years. And uh, um, 
the uh, the lesson was even even lower than uh, before last year. Okay, and there are some uh, gender difference. Uh, it's also uh, quite interesting that like, we find that um, the zero pass rate was higher in uh, girl or in female uh, people than uh, male male children or male people. But uh, in the EV71 clinical cases, we find that um, the male to female uh, ratio was around uh, 1.5. So there are some gender difference. Maybe um, the minimal uh, genetic or uh, zero pasture rate was higher in female, but uh, the severe case uh, rate was higher in male patients. So we find that uh, there are um, lower zero positive rate in young children, and there are some gender difference. And why uh, the zero positive rate was uh, so low? Yeah, we, we have uh, several um, possible factors. Huh? Uh, just now, uh, in the morning, we talked about uh, the uh, low birth rate in Taiwan. Taiwan uh, was maybe the third lowest birth rate worldwide. So uh, there are um, only one single child in one family. There are no siblings, OK? So children may get a decent one at a later uh, age in comparison to uh, last century, OK? And, uh, and in the morning, uh, our uh, vice director of Taiwan CDC, Dr. Lo, also talked about the uh, surveillance system. So we will know which period or which area uh, there was EV safety one circulation. So strict uh, implementation or preventive measures will be applied. And uh, then we make early detection of EV71 possible and uh, limit the spread. And also, Dr. Uh, Wang talked about uh, the teacher or the personnel in the kindergarten. They um, uh, have some preventive measure. As I know, in Taipei City or in other um, city, the teacher uh, in the kindergarten or daycare center, they will exam uh, children when they uh, go into the uh, uh, kindergarten or um, daycare center, they will find if there are any oral ulcer or skin lesion. If the uh, children have such lesion or ulcer, uh, they will, as a parent, uh, uh, take back your uh, children to to the hospital. So they may have some uh, preventive. Uh, 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 prevent the spray and uh, limited the spray of EV71. And um, uh, we find that after um, the year 2012, um, uh, EV71 fatal case was uh, very, very rare. So they maybe have uh, a lot of impact on the EV71 uh, uh, infection. Okay. And from our previous and uh, the study done last year, the risk factor associated with epicentral infection, the most important is sibling, okay, and the contact history. So why sibling is so important? From our previous study uh, for the intrathematic transmission, we find that if the um, virus get into the family, the transmission rate was very high uh, for the sibling is up to uh, 80 percent because and and because they are just one single child in one family so they are no sibling so um, maybe uh, you can explain why the zero positive rate was so low now and this is a uh, compar uh, comparison uh, of EV71 among different countries and this is Taiwan I just talked about. Uh, uh, so the 
uh, rate was uh, lower uh, during recent 10 years. And how about the other country? This is China. Um, their uh, preschool children, the uh, zero pass rate was very high, uh, between 35 to 70 percent. And Singapore was uh, relatively lower, uh, maybe similar to Taiwan now, it's around uh, 20 or 30 percent. And how about um, the um, Southeast Asia? And for Thailand, um, they, they report the uh, preschool children was very high, uh, and school children was also high, around 40 to 80 percent. And uh, Cambodia was very high, around 50 to 80 percent. And all, uh, sometimes even up to 90 percent. So different countries may have uh, different uh, zero pasture rate and uh, also we can find they may have greater disease burden okay and um, so um, how about uh, the following after the infection uh, they uh, the children may have a uh, uh, different severity. So uh, thank you for uh, Professor Ling and uh, Professor Fa. They just talk about the uh, uncomplicated and uncomplicated cases. And although we um, develop state-based management, uh, just uh, in the morning, uh, Dr. Shah. Uh, ha has um, introduced how uh, to manage uh, the severe EV71 cases. So including IVIG or intensive care or cardiopulmonary support, including ECMO. And we find that their uh, case mortality rate uh, was lower. But um, how about their long-term outcome or long-term sequela? So we follow up uh, the case with EV71 uh, central nervous system environment. We follow uh, 142 uh, children after um, uh, one or uh, seven year of uh, environment. And for the neurological outcome, uh, they may have uh, some secret uh, such as uh, uh, limb weakness or atrophy. In the polio-like uh, syndrome, about 56% uh, type sequela. And just now, Professor Huang had talked about the uh, possible mechanism of sequela. It may relate it to the neuron damage or neuron loss. Okay? And uh, in addition to that, I think uh, some patients of cardiopulmonary failure uh, may have um, sequela related to hypoxia. Okay, so they have more uh, or severe uh, sequela. Like uh, uh, in, in, in addition to limb weakness, they also have this swallowing knee tube bleeding and uh, hypoventilation knee. Um, ventilator support, and they have delayed neural development or lower in uh, intelligence. So uh, the neural development, uh, we can find that uh, if patients only have mild conjugal or meningitis, they do not have any delay. The group two is ansible myelitis without cardiopulmonary failure. Um, only one had gross motor delay. It may be related to polio-like syndrome. And the group three, the most severe case with cardiopulmonary failure. And they, 75% have a delay, including gross motor, bimotor language, and uh, uh, personal social delay. So this is one of the patient need uh, ventilator. And this is one page, another one patient in tracheal storming and uh, uh, she had polio-like syndrome and uh, she cannot move her right arm. 
And the other, uh, yeah, this is another patient. Uh, he had a, a shoulder uh, atrophy, and sometimes uh, he will have this uh, dislocation. Okay. How about their uh, cognitive function? And um, uh, we find that there are several factors to affect their ball scale or uh, verbal or um, performance IQ. The most important is the uh, severity. Okay, the uh, patient with uh, many jaundice or encephalitis, their ball scale IQ was around 100. It's normal. But in patients with cardiopulmonary failure, that mean both their IQ was um, uh, 83, was significant lower. And the other factor is age at onset. If the age at onset was lower than two years old, their IQ will be uh, significant lower. Okay. And also, um, they, the age onset less than two years old will affect their verbal comprehension and the perceptual organization. So uh, multivariate analysis also show uh, severity and the uh, onset will affect their cognitive function. And Professor Huang and Professor Liu also did a long-term study and they follow up um, uh, three, uh, uh, 60 three patients and um, uh, they may have the, uh, uh, some the residual deficits such as uh, cerebellum deficit and um, respiratory and motor impairment. So in conclusion, the case with ev one CNS environment and the cardiopulmonary failure may be associated with long-term neurologic sequela and a delayed neural development and reduce uh, cognitive function. And uh, age at onset less than two will affect their verbal in the perceptual organization. And the other uh, interesting finding is that um, some parents will uh, talk about their children's um, learning or um, later on uh, adjustment. They find that uh, uh, their school children will complain about uh, the child, the children will have uh, attention deficit. Uh, so I, uh, call, I, I, I did study collaboration with our uh, pediatric psychiatry, Dr. Uh, Gao. Uh, she was an expert of ADHD, so we did study uh, about the uh, ADHD. And we did a case control study uh, to examine if there are significant um, difference between the EB7 case with CNS environment and the control. And we find um, that um, um, parent or teacher's assessment uh, the in attention or had the activity score was significant higher in case with EV seventy one infection. Okay, yeah, the normal uh, the normal control uh, around three to five percent will have tendency of ADHD, but our case will have about twenty percent of uh, ADHD. So EV-71 infection may affect their attention and call hyperactivity uh, in children. And now we uh, are, uh, uh, did, uh, we, we now uh, do a new study about functional MRI to understand the mechanism. And, and uh, maybe we can find a possible effect area related to the uh, cold symptom of ADHD in our EB symptom cases. So I, uh, all my work uh, is teamwork. So I have to thank my previous colleagues at uh, Chang'e University, include, including Professor Lin and uh, Professor Xi and my current colleague at National Taiwan University. Thank you.